I was a school teacher for five years, and if you do that for five years, anything's better. <laughs> There's this very sort of egotistic thing about potters and painters and sculptors where in the, I don't care what they say, in the back of their mind they're thinking about what they're leaving behind, you know. And uh, when David Hockney dies, look at all the paintings that he's going to leave behind and he will be remembered for centuries. So there's a little element of that as well. The people who create stuff, I think they like the idea that they're going to leave something behind after they're gone. When I'm making pots with, and I know that there's an exhibitions at the Goldmark coming up, I do have it in the back of my mind about the way those pots will be grouped. And so I do make pots in succession and also with the view of one pot standing next to another and to another and to another, and that pots are not just made to be shown in isolation. When I give a talk or a demonstration, I'm always at pains to mention the fact that it's really hard work to make pots for a living. <laughs> you know, we mix the clay, we mix the glazes, we build the kilns, we fire the kilns, we clean the pots, we clean the kilns. Potters have to know an awful lot about an awful lot of things. It's physically hard work, it's demanding. So the whole thing, the whole aspect of making pots for a living is a challenging thing. So there's always been these little steps along the way where you kind of think, hmm, I need to move on to something else. I always wanted to try and do it all. Much like the punchong, just getting it right. It's taken me a long time to get this right. And punchong was a period of a couple of hundred years where Korean potters made pots with three elements. That was dark clay, white slip, and a clear glaze. Camera. It's a camera. a camera. Yeah. Are you going to smile? No. Oh. I've been to Korea many times. My wife is Korean, and so um, I've been probably eight, nine, ten times to Korea. And a couple of my best friends are well known Korean potters, one of which uh, Lee Kang Yo shows at the Goldmark. The Korean potters taught me quite a lot about the traditional techniques that um, Korean potters use. And just recently, in the wood kiln particularly, I've been working at trying to find my own way with punchong techniques, but at the same time has a, something of me about it too. And when you bear in mind that the kiln is only fired um, once or maybe twice in a, in a two-year period, um, development takes a long time. And so it's taken me probably three or four years to get this right. I've always enjoyed having a finger in lots of different pies. But the most important thing is that if the pots come out of the kiln, the three different kilns that I've got, that they all look as though they were made by the same person. That's important to me. This is a new technique that I've tried using white slip um, in, a, in a slip trailer over an iron slip. And I'm quite pleased with that, actually. And that's quite nice. That's the first one of those that I've had out of the kiln. That's one of the things that keeps me interested and keeps me wanting to, to make pots is this kind of constant search for something new and something, something different. For me, I want people to see that I have succeeded by daring to fail.
For me, the future is just to carry on making, really. I mean, I, I, I can't do anything else, if I'm honest. That's what I do. That was good, wasn't it?